Hey, it's MK and welcome to week two of Kit Conspiracy. And this is the page kit that I have put together for my Wherever collection by 49 and Market. I have nine photos, I think. In fact, I think I count them twice because I can't believe I have nine photos. Now I'm going to take my Creative Memories circle cutter and cut all of these photos, but I'm not going to do that on camera just because of the fact that it takes a long time for me to decide what size circles I want. I also pulled out some packaging as well as this stencil by 49 and Market. This is the postcard stencil. And I'm gonna use scattered straw for this stencil because I forgot what other color I was going to use. Um, with this beautiful canary cardstock by Close to My Heart. I also pulled out this page as well as this paper. Now the first um, collection of tickets and whatnot printed are the backing paper for the 49 and Market Wherever collection. So I'm gonna be doing that. And then I'm going to um, use this stretch of highway. This was my favorite paper. I did love the blue side of this paper, but I'm gonna end up using the stretch of highway because it was perfect for my photos. So just sharing with you guys um, that it was the backside of the packaging that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be doing a double page layout on top of this black cardstock again by Close to My Heart. Um, I'm gonna miss Close to My Heart's white core cardstock, you guys. I know that there are lots of other options out there for me, but this one was my favorite. I am going to miss it when it's gone. Um, but crossing my fingers, because it sounds like Stampin' Up! is really stepping up their game to invite us close to my heart makers into the mix. So I am, uh, am going to hold my breath and see what happens um, in the future and see where Stampin' Up! takes the, um, the close to my heart ideas and, and what they do for us. So anyways, um, always keep keeping in the positive vibes, you guys. Got my fingers crossed. So I'm gonna get started on this. I am going to stretch these two pieces of paper across a two page layout and leaving a quarter inch border all the way around for my black. I think it just really makes this cardstock really pop into it. So I'm just trimming off quarter of an inch here and there on both sides to make it look like this paper here is still framed in. And then I went ahead and cut off, I wanna say about two and a quarter, maybe two and a half inches um, from that road portion, uh, so that way the whole road is all on one side of my um, of my design. I did not want to cut my road in half. Um, and then I did the same thing with the ticketed paper, so that way I could finish off. So I'm just trying to decide, yeah, it's about two and a half inches. So I'm trying to figure out where to cut my, um, my ticket paper, uh, so that way I have the same amount with my quarter inch border. <laughs> on the one side because I only want quarter inch borders on the outside uh, of my of my design. I didn't want half an inch on the outside. So I'm trying to make sure with the only paper I have that I get it right the first time. And then because the design went all the way down, I actually have a half of an inch to cut off of the other side um, or at the bottom side because the branding strip is the same print going down into, uh, into that design. So um, I'm also taking into effect, uh, I don't want those flowers. Uh, I, I, the, it just seems like they're really weird colors to me and uh, I wasn't into them, uh, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to try to figure out how to, um, how to hide the flowers. I don't mind if some of the greenery is showing, but the flowers I definitely was not interested in having in my design. And I am borrowing an idea that I took from the most current Close to My Heart and last Close to My Heart catalog, uh, where on the design they have this little diamond color or this diamond paper uh, coming in off to the side. And then that's basically where their design was, um, uh, I don't know, branched off of. And so I'm going to borrow that design and use my diamond pa um, paper to just cover up portions that I don't want to be seen. So it's not going to be a huge impact in my design, but enough to where it helps me hide what I don't want on a pattern paper. And then I, of course, um, am using my strayed, uh, my scattered straw to uh, 
basically toned down this bright yellow paper. I, I wanted the bright yellow paper, but I didn't want it to be like, whoa, here I am, look at me. Uh, so I'm using the scattered straw to tone it down just a hair, even though you're not gonna see a whole lot of it. And then I'm going to um, scuff, I'm, I used the edge of the ink pad, hoping that that was gonna be enough and it wasn't. So now I'm taking my blending tool and bringing it in a little bit more and just distressing that uh, canary cardstock. Toning it down, basically, is what I was trying to go for. And then I'm using the packaging uh, that came with the enamel dots or the wishing bubbles is what 49 and Market likes to call them. And when I use my tape runner on a slick surface too fast, it actually doesn't stick to the slick surface and it ends up rolling into itself. And so it takes me a hard minute to realize that my, I'm not putting any tape down where it needs to go and I'm just rolling it up um, into itself. And so I have to uh, fix my tape runner here and there. Uh, so that way I can keep going with, you know, taping, but I do need to remember on a slick surface, I have to go a little slower than I would if it was just a normal piece. So here I'm just trying to decide what part of my design do I want uh, to show and stick out and all that good stuff, but I really am liking the way it looks. I just needed to scuff up the edges, minus the ones that are going to meet in the center of the layout. Um, I wanted to scuff up the edges just to give it uh, that grungy look that the paper already has. Um, plus, the grungy edge, when I put the two pieces together, it makes it to where it looks like it's already finished and I don't have to come up with something to cover up my edges um, or my seams when the two paper two papers meet. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I've got this road paper and then I'm going to meet it up with this ticket paper. And because I've scuffed up my edge, it prevents me from needing something to cover up this border right here. So um, it, it just is already a finished edge in my brain, even though it's a raw edge. <laughs> so I really do like how that looks. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to bring this diamond uh, or, di or triangle in from all the way to the edge of the black paper. I'm not going to bring it all the way in um, and show and expose the black paper. It looks like it's coming in from, uh, from the, you know, from the outside, basically. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. I apologize for my nasally sound today. Again, I am getting over this head cold um, and it is just lingering like it's right there. I've got my energy back. I've got everything back except that, um, you know, I still have this nasally sound uh, that, that uh, yeah, is just lingering. It's not going anywhere. All right, it's going to bring in my last little triangle, and I love the way that my paper looks. I, I just am, I love it. I, I'm just like, oh my gosh, look at this. Okay, so here are all nine of my photos. I think there was nine, right? Or maybe when there was only seven. I don't know, you guys. One of my layouts, I have nine photos. So maybe this one only has seven now that I'm counting all of my dots. Yep, there's only seven. Oh my gosh, I can't count. And what these are, are they are um, along uh, Highway 95 in Nevada. It's actually 700 and 705 miles long from the Oregon border of Nevada all the way down to where Vegas and California collide um, is where 95 rides. And a section of this highway is designated as the Memorial, Veterans Memorial Highway. And it starts off with the, um, the sign that says Veterans Memorial Highway. And then every mile you read a sign that is dedicated or memorialized for um, the veterans for each battle that the Americans have been in. And so you just get to drive along. And my husband really likes taking this road because it just makes him feel very patriotic, even though it's, you know, a vast plain of nothingness. As you can see in each mile, the landscape does not change. <laughs> in fact, you're probably thinking I'm taking the same picture over and over and over again. But the beauty of this part of it here is it gives us a moment to reflect um, all the memories, all the feelings that we have um, 
you know, for our history. It really does. And my husband actually has a playlist specific for this stretch of highway. I know that that seems weird, uh, but we do. It's almost like pl the playlist that everybody plays during the 4th of July and, and the fireworks start happening and all this other stuff. But we do. We have a playlist that as soon as we hit and see the sign, we hit the playlist and we just listen to the music and we feel very patriotic um, listening and reading the signs. And my kids take turns reading the signs and calling out the wars. Um, my grandfather fought in one of these wars. It is actually pretty cool. Um, I actually don't like saying that word. Uh, I prefer battle. I don't know why. Um, it just doesn't sound as harsh as uh, the W word sounds. But um, it, it just makes us feel like we're contributing by going on this highway and I, I, and I don't know, you guys, um, reflecting on what it took to get us here, right? And that's, and that's basically what it is. Every now and then uh, we turn the music down and we read a section off of Wikipedia uh, for the kids to learn, you know, the, um, the years that each war was there. We have a whole mile um, to reflect on that war and the time frame that it took from start to finish. Um, we, you know, we remind the kids of how many lost on each side. It's not, we don't just focus on the American side. We focus on both sides of it and everything else. Um, and so it's, it's a learning curve as well as just a reflection of, you know, what it took to get us to where we are today. So I really do like, um, you know, like taking not really taking this road um, or anything like that. Um, my husband does because it's just a long stretch to think and to, um, you know, to reflect on what, you know, what are we doing? What are, you know, where are we at in our lives and whatnot? Um, sometimes if our kids are sleeping at this point, depending on what time of the day we touch on this highway, um, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we rethink how we are living, you know, what, what our financial status is, what, you know, where, where are we at? Where do we want to be at? And I, I don't know, it's just something about this road and these signs that um, bring out the deepest conversations with me and my husband. And I just, I really do love it. So for another interest on this layout, I decided to do circular elements and then I have three little clusters and then around and amongst my clusters are my embellishments and everything. I do want to bring in these, um, I, I don't know, these legends of scale. <laughs> <laughs> that tell us uh, distance and road and everything. Um, I did pop every, almost everything up on foam other than, of course, the paper that you saw me glued down. I have a couple other embellishments that are glued straight down to the page, but all the cars are popped up. I have the, um, the icon cars as well as the old classic cars. Um, everything that uh, was car related within this collection, except of course the stop sign. I only wanted to use one of those, or I should say signals, um, the road signals. I only really wanted to use one of those. Um, I, I thought two would be redundant, even though I'm using the exact same <laughs> little car designs um, throughout. Yes, that is redundant, but it is a very long stretch. And the only thing that you see besides these signs and maybe potentially a mile marker are other cars on this road, um, especially semis. Semis um, take this road because it's it's one that doesn't go through a whole lot of cities and towns. Um, every now and then you'll go through a farming town, but that's about it. Um, but yes, it 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 is mostly a straight way for semi trucks um, to get you know from one big city to the next big city without having to go through a lot of other cities um, and towns and things like that. So I think it's great. Um, we love to travel on it because of the fact that it gets us from point A to point B relatively fast um, instead of taking all of the state routes and all of the little minor highways to where we have to get into the city to change into another, um, into another road and whatnot. And so we just always take this one here uh, and it, and it's, it's amazing. It really is. We could we can deter off and take a smaller road and go see one of the ghost towns. Um, we can deter off and go, you know, get into trouble and find our way into Area 51. Who knows, you guys? Seriously, that's um, this road is crazy. <laughs> 
Uh, so anyways, finishing off this layout with a couple of these enamel little cars. I thought that they were the cutest little things, um, but I didn't really have a whole lot of... Well, I, okay, I do have a lot of road ride pictures, but they all look like this, and they all are very, very boring. I'm just saying. It's, it's not something to write home about or even to do a, a single page layout on. Normally they end up in my pocket page because I do love to document um, our car rides, um, back, especially when the kids were littler. Oh my gosh, I have so many stories on that one. Um, but yeah, I definitely wasn't intending this to be a two page layout um, in, in the beginning when I first started taking these photos, but now that I see them stretched and spanned all the way across this page, I do love that, um, it turned into this two page layout. And I mean, it just turned it. I love it. You guys, I, I was so ecstatic to see the final result <clears throat> of how this layout turned out. So anyways, that is my first layout for week two for K conspiracy in April of 2024. Uh, for you guys, I had a blast creating it. I cannot wait to see what Janet Fritz comes up with. Don't forget to check out her channel over on Galaxy Girl Creations here on YouTube. Also, too, down below, I have a link to our Facebook group. If you are not following us over there, that is where everyone else is posting what they are doing with their kits, in case you are curious. Um, and yeah, don't forget to check out... Um, check out the Facebook group if you guys are curious. And uh, thanks again, and I will check you guys all later. Bye.